Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Seller Board Show. I'm your host, Vladi Gordon, and my today's guest is Kevin King. It's the second part of the interview with Kevin, and uh, we're going to talk about keywords, um, how many keywords you, do you need, and how to find profitable keywords. Uh, Kevin uh, also talks about the, one of his products, so if you want to know what Kevin sells, then uh, make sure to watch this video. Uh, we discussed the reviews and product launch strategies with um, Facebook ads and influence ads. And uh, last but not least, uh, Kevin uh, gave us a hack. And um, it's about a hidden report. Uh, so there is a hidden report in the Seller Central, which uh, you can um, activate through, through the seller support. And um, he explains what this report is about and how to use it to optimize your listings. So uh, make sure you give us a like if you actually like this video and subscribe to our channel. And before we get started, uh, I'd like to mention our sponsor. Sellerboard.com is a profit analytics tool for, for Amazon sellers uh, on a mission to build the world's most accurate tool. It's uh, showing you all fees and expenses uh, on um, every level, on, on the product level, on SKU level, on, um, on the level of a brand or a marketplace. Uh, also uh, shown by time, week, month, uh, any specific day with a lot of visualization options and um, kind of business intelligence. So um, if you want to know your margins exactly, uh, Sellerboard is the tool to give you a live view on the profit and loss with a possibility to zoom, in, zoom in, into every fee and every product. Make sure to, you check out our free trial. There's a free trial one month. Uh, the link is in the description and after that it's starting only at $19 a month. Let us know what you think and now let's start the show. So let's talk about uh, reviews, you know, in terms of um, picking a product. Um, like obviously it's probably going to be hard if you yeah. compete with somebody who has four and a half thousand reviews. Um, yeah, you want to, I mean, if, if you got, if there's one guy that has that, you might be able to compete, but if several people have, you know, thousands of reviews, it's going to make it very difficult to compete until, I mean, Amazon might change the system. I mean, there, I know some of the, the other guys in the industry are hoping they do to where it, 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 it changes to, instead of saying 4,500 reviews, they'll say 500 plus oh. or something like that. Mm -hmm. If that happens, that'll give us a better opportunity uh, to come in and compete and which Amazon kind of needs to do because now. Mm -hmm. if, if there's a couple old school guys that have been selling for a while and have a lot of reviews, mm -hmm. maybe their product is not the best. Maybe my product that I just innovated and changed is actually a better product, but I don't really have a chance. Yeah. So that's not, Amazon's all about the customer first. So that's not the best thing for the customer. Yeah. It so, kind of makes, it makes the market a bit more aesthetic, right? Because yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, so I, I'm hoping that that will change and that, that will, that that will be a, a that would be a really good thing um, for the customer and for us as as sellers, so we can come and compete. But as it is right now, yeah, if you go into a market where the top, yeah, you know, there's two or three guys that have a a ton of reviews like that, it's going to be hard. But some markets, it's still okay. Maybe you can be the number four, number five guy, and still make good money. It depends on the depth of the keywords, mm -hmm. uh, you know, how many different keywords are there, and what's what the volume is on those, and how people are positioned. You still might be able to go in there, and Maybe you're not selling 50 a day, you're selling 10, but if you can make money on that, uh, why not? Uh, you don't have to be, in, in this game, you don't have to be in first or second place to make money. The guy down in, in some cases in fifth place is, is killing it. I mean, you do want, for the keywords you're going after, you need to be on page one, mm -hmm. and you need to be in the top four or five positions on page one. Uh, if, you're, if you're below the top four or five positions, mm -hmm. you're not getting much of the sales. Mm -hmm. um, so you need to find some keywords now, maybe for the big keywords, you're down the page. You're number 10 or 12 on the page, and you're, you're picking up a few sales here or there, but you found three or four other keywords that aren't as popular, but, and you can position yourself to be number one, number two, number three, whatever, and that's where you're picking up most of your sales. Nice. Most, most products make their sales off of three, between three and eight keywords. About eight, 80 okay. to 90% of the sales for most products come off between three and eight keywords. Now, in some products, they do have a lot of <clears throat> long tail keywords, uh -huh. um, and you can make some sales off of those, but typically those long tails are 10, 15% maybe of your sales. So you got to figure out what those three to eight are and figure out which ones of those, uh, you want to capture as many of those as you can, but uh, which ones of those are within your budget and means to, uh -huh. to capture and focus on those. 
Like, you know, there are some tools or um, also some guys talking about keywords, especially long-term keywords and harvesting like tons of keywords, series like thousands or, or maybe yeah. 700. Do you do that? Or? No, I used to. I used to. And I used to try to make my listing have as many keywords as possible. You know, I would try to make sure I would have, I would harvest and get 700 keywords and make sure somewhere in my listing, I used every one of those words. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't do that anymore. Um, I, I will start off with a title that's a little bit long mm -hmm. because I need to figure out which of these say eight keywords is going to work for me. Yeah. And after a month or two, uh, once I have the data, I will change my title to make it shorter mm -hmm. and focus on the two or three that are, are, making me the money that I can compete on. And same thing with my bullets and listings. I don't fill those out anymore. I focus. It makes your listing more relevant. Mm -hmm. It makes, uh, I think, I, I don't have proof of this, but I think there's something in Amazon where it says, look, if you have a hundred, you have a hundred words on your, on your listing, mm -hmm. every word gets one point. But if you have 50 words on your listing, every word gets two points as far mm -hmm. as relevance. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's simplified. That's not exactly how it works, but, but, and so I think less is more. And it yep. makes it more relevant and more better and better. So your, your, your title is super important on Amazon as far as ranking. That's the most important place. The subject, uh, subject matter field in the back end, not the search term field, the subject matter field is super important. Um, and then uh, there's um, your images are real important. And so people eat with their eyes first. So yeah. I, I, I'm a firm believer. Most people don't read Amazon listings. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they might skim them. I mean, ask yeah. yourself last, last several times you bought on Amazon, how many times have you actually read the listing? Never. Just the uh, images might, and the title. That's it. And it's images and the title. You might, you might skim the bullet points or something real quick. Or if there's something technical yeah, you need yeah. to know, you, you might, you know, read the listing, but most, most people don't read that. You got to focus on your images and too many people, uh, just take pictures of their phone or, or they don't really focus on their images uh, in, in, the, in the way that they should. And so, um, so, so back, you asked originally about getting reviews. Um, so people say, well, how do I get reviews? How do I compete? Um, well, you can do the, you know, the illicit rate ways where you, people have friends or family that aren't connected to them do it, or they, they go on Facebook groups or they, offer people, if you buy it, I'll give you, I'll PayPal your money back. I don't recommend any of that stuff. It's against the terms of service. Um, mm -hmm. I recommend what I always tell people is look, reviews take time. It's not going to be an overnight thing. Um, but put out a damn good product and make sure you're, it's a good product that satisfies the need. People will be happy to write about it. I have a dog bowl that I do. It's a slow feed dog bowl. Mm -hmm. And this, this bowl, I created it from scratch. It's, I designed it from scratch and had the molds made and everything. Mm -hmm. Um, this, this dog bowl, people love it because their dog used to eat in 20 seconds and now it takes them three minutes and the dog doesn't get sick from eating too fast or throw up or have gas. Mm -hmm. They love it. So they, they go and they write reviews like, oh my God, my dog is so much better now. He's not pooping in the house or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. They write reviews. It solves a problem. They're, 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 mm -hmm. they're proud of it. Uh, and it's a quality product. And so mm -hmm. people will, will leave reviews. I mean, you can use, if you're brand registered, I would recommend you use EBC, um, you know, mm -hmm. to get the, uh, the early reviewer program in EBC pays $60 to get those first five. You can do that in the U S I don't know if, what other markets you could do that in, but for sure in the U S mm -hmm. if you can get, if you yeah have the money, you can try to get it's someone. Vine is it like you know, the vine vine is different. That's about 2,500 bucks. Okay. Um, and that's mostly for vendors, but sometimes you can actually, if you know somebody, they can uh, get you in there too. Uh, mm -hmm. That can be a, a great way to get reviews. Um, you can use influencers uh, to try to, you know, to get some reviews and just put out a good product or, or create a, a system. Uh, uh, I don't use email follow-ups anymore. I, I turned off all my email. I don't, I don't use those. Some people still use them, uh, but I'm, I don't think uh, people begging for reviews in there is just, I don't know. It's just not what I want to represent mm -hmm. myself as. Uh, and the, the open rates are so abysmal and the response rates are so abysmal. You're better off creating a really cool insert that maybe has a QR code or has a scan this code and it takes them into a many chat sequence, uh -huh. for example. Uh, and then you can take them through a whole process and try to get a re reviews uh, through that. I know some people are doing success, having a great success with that. Um, so, uh, uh -huh. but the, the fundamental thing is you just got to put out a good product and, and reviews, they, they take time. You're not, they're not going to be, that's why I said this is not a, uh, people get impatient in this business. They launch their product and in two weeks they want to see like be on page one competing with the big boys. It, it takes time. That's why I said earlier, I give my product six months, you know, on that $2,000 to, to get to your level where you to get, yeah, 
expected to, to get to a two thousand dollars profit a mm -hmm. month um, because it takes time. Usually, my first order uh, on Amazon, I'm not one of these guys that tests the market. I don't buy ten things or fifty things and test mm -hmm. it. I, I do my homework and I go all in. I mm -hmm. do the math. I need to buy five hundred or a thousand, whatever it is. I'm all in. Uh, I don't believe in the the little test. Let's let's test this. That's you're, that's that's just playing. You're just you're not. That's not a business. You're just you're just mm -hmm. playing around. Um, and so I, 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 that's what I do. Um, and so I'll, I'll, I'll go all in on a product and let's usually that first order, I'm not making any money on. It mm -hmm. might be a break even cause I got to do PPC. I might have to do giveaways. Mm -hmm. That's another area people now can, you can really do well is targeting that PPC on Amazon is improving greatly. I mean, they, now you can, you can uh, do product targeting or you can actually target your competition. So you can mm -hmm. actually, pick the products you want to appear on the page for, um, which is, which is super powerful. At least in the U S you can do that. Um, and they just, uh, announced dynamic bidding. So now you can mm -hmm. bid on whether you want to be on the top of search or you want to be in, uh, where do you want to be on the page? You want to be on product display pages, top of search yeah. and how do you want to balance it? It's, it's really, powerful. it's getting better and better on the targeting. Mm -hmm. I think you're going to see that that's the, uh, the future is it's going to take, to sell on Amazon, you're going to have to be willing to spend more money. You're going to have to be willing to spend on PPC to get placement. You're going to have to be willing to, uh, to do some of that. I think that's, uh, you need to build that into your budgets as PPC is going to become a more and more important aspect of it. So look, uh, let, let's summarize about reviews. So you talked about inserts, you talked about this early reviewer program, right? Mm -hmm. which, you, which you get if you're, um, if you're brand registered with uh, EBC enhanced brand content, right? Right. And um, then you talked about influencers and giveaways and um, PPC. So um, um, is that, is that um, it or did I miss something? That's pretty much it. That's pretty much what, what I do. I don't do any of the, uh, mm -hmm. I don't do any of the, the tactics out there that some yeah. people do to, to try to, to uh, mm -hmm. get reviews. I don't do yeah. you know what, what the Chinese hackers do uh, is they 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 find uh, dormant listings. So what they do is they'll, they'll find someone that it's, it's happened to me. They they have a system where they can find people that didn't properly delete their listing. And so maybe I was selling a uh, say a dog bowl uh, and I quit selling it uh, because it wasn't making me money or for whatever reason I quit selling it. And I didn't actually delete the listing out of Amazon. I just let it go out of stock and go inactive. Yeah. Maybe it has a hundred reviews on there. Um, mm -hmm. they, they have a way to find those products and using a vendor central account, they have a hack where they can go in they can take over that product, uh, mm -hmm. and change the pictures and change everything. And they merge, what they do is a merge, they merge it with something else. And that way they instantly have a hundred reviews. And that's why you see a lot of times in some products, you're like, it just launched how the heck sell these reviews. You start reading it yeah. and they're, they're selling a um, different product, you know, fitness stuff. And all the reviews are about blenders. Mm -hmm. It's because most people don't read the reviews. Most people look at the first page of reviews and then they look at the star rating and that's about it. Um, mm -hmm. And so they, they, that's a problem. I think Amazon's going to be changing that. Amazon's coming out with a, a unified account sometime in 2019 uh, where Vendor Central and Seller Central are become, become basically one account. Okay. And when that happens, mm -hmm. I think that's going to help eliminate some of these problems. That's from the Chinese hackers. Tell me, is there anything else like what you would recommend for launch? Um, so we're getting reviews more or less organically. Like, do you go strong for PPC or um, some external traffic? I do it all. I mean, on launch, I think you need to have a multi-prong approach. I do heavy PPC. I don't wait for reviews. Some people say, well, you got to wait for your first five reviews to turn on PPC. I don't believe in that. I do it from the, from the get go. And now you're going to have a lower conversion rate without reviews there, but that it's okay. You got to get the data. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I run heavy PPC. I run product with, with product targeting and the keywords I've researched and automatic to, to do some uh, additional, make sure that the listing is, is good. Mm -hmm. I run Facebook. I do some Facebook stuff. I have a list of people. So I make some offers there mm -hmm. uh, to my current list of uh, uh, customers. Uh, I'll try to line up influencers to uh, to do some uh, to do some stuff. I use the Amazon giveaways. They actually where do they give away? Like you can give away up to thirty uh, units in a, in a giveaway, and they have to watch a YouTube video in order to to, to maybe have a chance to win the giveaway. I do all that uh, as much of that as possible mm -hmm. uh, to 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 launch the product and try to try to get it going. Okay. 
Nice. And um, like in terms of like um, after launch, like when you have your product, let's say at a level where you, where you expected it to be. So you reached uh, page one for the most keywords. Um, for you, is it like a lot of work to maintain it or to develop it further? Or is it rather a passive thing then? And once you get to page one, it, it becomes a little bit more passive. Mm -hmm. um, and you gotta, you gotta kind of monitor it and use some tools to monitor just to make sure Amazon doesn't change the system and you slip or some, uh, some competitor comes in and uh, does something malicious against you or whatever. But it be, once you, once you get there, I mean, I don't turn off PPC. I still run the PPC even I'm on page one. Uh, but, uh, I might dial it back a little bit, not spend quite as much, but no, it, yeah, that's when it becomes a little bit more, a little bit more passive, but it's difficult to stay on page one at the top of page one in some categories. But if you pick these categories, they're not the big sell. The, I mean, the products that are not in these huge, you know, BS, low BSRs, you know, 300, 500, 600, but they're more in the four in the U S market, the four to 8,000 range, maybe 10,000. You don't, you, you can stay on page one longer and, and, and have less troubles mm -hmm. with um, no troubles with hijackers and no troubles. It's just, it's just better. So let's talk about um, tools for a second. Like what, what would you recommend for, uh, for the product research? I recommend for product research, I recommend Helium 10. Uh -huh. uh, they have a whole suite of tools uh, that I think are probably the best. There's, there's a couple others out there that, that have good tools too, but I think Helium 10 has the, the best tools uh, as a set. If you, if you, if, if you want to, if you have the budget, I would do Helium 10. I would probably do a uh, viral launch. And uh, I know there's a couple uh, analyze and a few in the European market that, that are pretty good and you can you can dabble on any, all those but if you had to choose just one uh, I would uh, I would choose helium 10 because you get the most bang for the buck and they've got some really good data and their black box tool and their cerebro and magnet tools are, are really really good at, at doing the research and they get some tracking tools and stuff and that's the that's probably who I, I would I would go with um, as far as, as as the number one tool and then um, you know the main tools you need are you need the keyword tools, uh, the, the data discovery research tools, and then you need a really good tool to, to keep track of, of your profits like uh, seller board or there's, you know, Helium 10 has a, a, I mean, if you want the details, you know, seller board is going to go in much more de detail. If you just need the top level stuff, you know, it's something in Helium 10 that, that does that uh, at, at just the, the cursory level. But um, I like to get down in the weeds, so I'll usually supplement that with a, a really good uh, profit analy uh, analyzation tool. Yeah. So tell me about the keywords. Like you said, um, three to eight keywords generate make uh, generate ninety percent of the profits. And I was wondering, how do you how do you know basically? And and also, uh, I've how do seen you know I've seen I've seen data from inside Amazon. I've okay. seen. Uh, uh, I I don't I don't uh, I don't do any kind of hacking or any kind of illicit stuff. Uh, but. Mm -hmm. Uh, because of my position in the in the industry, and I speak at a lot of events, I, I've met people that have inside information, and they, they show it to me, and they look, 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 look. This is what uh, is happening, and or they analyze it. They get all these reports, and they analyze it. And so, mm -hmm. and, and from my own experience, that's that's fairly true too. Um, so, like if we if we pick a product, for example, I don't know, a jump rope. I think it's a it's a horrible example, but let's just uh, stick with it as an example. But uh, like a jump rope. Now I'm thinking about my listing, so I guess I'd like to understand what are the main keywords. What should I put into the title? And um, yeah, well, well, how are... well, the main keywords that the the main keywords the way you I would do that if it's a jump rope is I would go and I would I would use a tool like Helium 10 Cerebro, uh -huh. and I would. I would go on amazon.com use it and then I would uh, type in jump rope and see what the, what the top, uh, what comes back as results. I would then use the x-ray tool from helium 10 to Chrome extension that it's kind of like jungle scout or something. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, and it will pop up and it'll tell me this is what their estimated sales are. Mm -hmm. I would, I will sort that by number of units sold, not by dollars or profits, but by how many they're selling. So sort the columns by number of units sold. And then I would take the top 10, Mm -hmm. uh, of those, the ASINs of the top 10, I would put all those ASINs into the Cerebro tool. There's, there's a way to put them all in one page. You don't do them like one by one. There's a way to put like one ASIN and then on the next line, you put the next nine all together and it, okay. it puts them all together. And then you hit the, you hit the, whatever the search button or the go button, whatever it is. 
And then it's going to go out and it's going to look at all 10 of those ASINs together mm -hmm. rather than individually. And it's going to then spit back all the keywords that they're potentially ranking on. And it's going to create this matrix. And it's going to say, look, out of these 10, these 10 products, seven of them are ranking for on the word uh, skip rope. Mm -hmm. Not jump rope, but skip rope. Okay. And they're, they're ranking in these positions. And this is the keyword demand and this is the competition. And then it's going to say, that, you know, only – uh, and they, so you're going to get the keywords that you can see. Um, I, I show this, uh, it's hard to, to, to explain this without showing, but, and, and at the freedomticket.com, there's a free webinar. Um, and I show you, uh, just go watch it. It's on replay. You don't have to buy the course or anything. Just, but if you just go to freedomticket.com, the first hour solid train, I show this exact process and it makes it much more cool. understandable, but it, but it's, uh, it's, it's very, very valuable. And you can then zero in on, Look, I'm not going to go after the word jump rope. Maybe I'm going to use the word jump rope in my title because it's an important word. It describes the product. But my focus is going to be on skip rope or on whatever whatever it is because there's less competition. I'm going to try to rank for those less competitive keywords first. But what happens on Amazon is whatever's in your title, every word in your title gets a little bit of love from the algorithm for every sale. So if I'm focusing on skip rope, uh, I don't even know if that's a, one of the words. I'm just making that up. But skip yeah. rope. Um, I'm going to still have jump rope in there because every time I make a sale off skip rope, I might get like one point in that to on my score. And but the word jump rope, I get like one tenth of a point or something. Mm -hmm. So over time, I'm going to, I'm going to rise with skip rope. And I'm also going to be start to rise with jump rope. And hopefully over time, six months, maybe a year jump rope without having to do a lot of giveaways and go crazy. It's going to keep rising and keep rising and more people will find me that way. Okay. And so that, that's, that's, that's how I do it. Wow. Look, Kevin, um, I have a um, last question be before I would um, ask you to, to talk about your, uh, your course and um, your mastermind. Give us a hack or something, you know, maybe some secret, uh, secret thing that we can apply. Um, sure. All right. So if you're already, let me see. If you're already selling on Amazon, if you're already doing, this is for private label. If you already got a private label product on Amazon, something you want to do is, you know, in the re business reports, you go into Seller Central and the business reports section of Seller Central, there's all these different reports, advertising reports, click through mm -hmm. all these different reports. Well, there's one that's missing there. And there's one that uh, for whatever reason, Amazon doesn't turn it on. I don't know why they don't turn it on, but they don't, <clears throat> they don't turn it on. So what you want to do is you want to open up a ticket with Amazon. I know this works in the U.S., so I don't, I'm not 100% sure about Europe. I, I think it works in Europe, but I know for a fact it's the U.S. So you, you open up a, a, a ticket, an email, send an email into Seller Central uh, and say, hey, can you please turn on my category listing report? It's called the okay. category listing report. And so it just, and they'll turn it on uh, usually for like a week, maybe a month. It's, uh, it's temporary. And so, and then you'll get email back and they'll say, oh, we've turned this on. You're going to want to go and you want to download that report. It's, an, it's like an Excel spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to go and you're going to download uh, the flat file template for your category. So if you're selling beauty, mm -hmm. you're going to go and download the beauty, the flat file. Beauty for, adding, for adding new product. For adding new products if, as if you're going to do it via yeah. a flat file. Yeah. And then you're going to also download the, the browse tree uh, for, for, uh, that, for, your, for your category. Then you're going to open that category listing report, and that's basically the, bl the blueprint of your ASIN. It's going to have all kinds of fields in there, fields that aren't even in the back end of Seller Central, stuff that you don't see. Uh, that, that are, most of them are in the flat file, but a lot of people miss them. Mm -hmm. And it's going to tell you what should be in those, those fields. And you're going to compare some of that, and you're going to compare some of the columns, like, um, say, subject matter. You're like, if you go in the back, our, our, our intended use, that's a good one, intended use. In the back end of Seller Central, there's a field called, you know, near your search terms, it's called intended use. Mm -hmm. And you're like, what am I supposed to put there? This is a, this is a barbecue glove. Well, the intended use is cooking meat. That's mm -hmm. what you think, you know, but that's not what you're supposed to put. And it doesn't tell you. And, or, and there's another column there that says, uh, who's this for? And the defaults are like men, women, mm -hmm children or something and you're like okay but any, that's not what you should put i don't know why amazon is, it doesn't have the right data there but this category listing report and you compare it with the browse tree guide uh, for the, those columns 
and the flat file guide because there's there's a there's a screen in those guides I mean those flat files where it's like the instructions and it says these yeah. are the, val the valid values these ten yes. values mm -hmm. so if you find out those ten values the ones that are most important for your product or relevant for your product and fill them in fill them in uh, into the category listing report or into your flat file on your back end whatever get them into your listing mm -hmm. and you're gonna see that your relevance score goes up your your break will probably go up if you do it right and all the filters on the left hand side you know when people come in and they get a lot of results and there's a bunch of filters on the left hand side Let's say it's a beauty product and they, they want to filter by for dry skin or whatever mm -hmm. um, it that way it makes sure that you you filter properly uh, whenever someone puts all that stuff over there and you eliminate your competition. So, uh, so take a look at. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, go ahead. So basically, this category listing report it gives me like all possible values or best practice values, basically for all those no, fields. That the category listing report. No, it, the category listing report shows you what you're missing, and shows you what's okay. wrong. And then you you take the the browse tree guide and the flat file and you compare it because it will match up. There's the way. Sometimes the flat file will call something uh, like, uh, I don't know, I can't remember a specific example, but like a uh, subject matter. It mm -hmm. might not be called subject matter. It might be called uh, some other word. It, they don't match. The words yeah. don't match, but you can see which, oh, this is supposed to be that. And, okay. and here's the alias for it. And you know, oh, I need to put these values in here. And it, it's, it's, it, it's so do huge. You, like, do, you get the do you see the values in the category listing report? Uh, no, the category listing report just places like a blueprint of your. So it'll show you what all you're missing. It'll show you what you need to add. Okay, it's what's, just the field names, basically. It's the field names and the data that's there already that you already okay. have inputted already, mm -hmm. and then you compare that with the flat okay. file mm -hmm. and the browse tree guy because those have some different values, some different yeah. column. They don't have the same. Mm -hmm. And then you take the ones that you can, you fill them in, mm -hmm. and then the category listing reports you fill in as much of the field. You might, you can't fill in all those fields. There might be a hundred fields. Some of them you can't fill in, but you fill in as many as you can, either using a flat file and uploading it or going into the seller central and, and figuring out, Oh, okay, this is what, uh, this one means uh, yeah. on the, on the other tab or the additional tab. And there's sometimes there's depending on your category, there's tons of options there and you'll know what to fill in and, and what to put and what's missing. It, it's, it's really valuable. Cool. Yeah. Okay. I think I get it because when you download the, um, this flat file, it's basically empty, right? So you can't, yes. you can't um, have your listings in this file already. So you don't really know what's, what's in your listing. I mean, some of the fields you see in the seller central, but some are missing. Yes. Like I think one that was missing was um, maximum water value. I think they added it now, but okay. That's obviously not relevant for, um, for ranking or so, but uh, although who knows, uh, but I know at least in Germany uh, or in Europe, uh, it was missing in some of the categories. But you could see it in the flat file, but there was no way to see like what's in there at the moment, right? And yeah. I get it. Oh, that's awesome. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, just one question. Uh, you, you mentioned subject matter um, value. Did they subject matter field. field. Yeah, what's, what's that? The subject matter field is uh, in the back end on Seller Central, you have a you have a keywords, you have your, your search term field. That's where yep. a lot of people will fill, fill in additional terms or something back there. Uh, but there's another one uh, called uh, subject matter. Mm -hmm. And it's actually five, five lines of 50 characters. And that one is pretty important in, uh, for Amazon for ranking. I've actually been able to rank products uh, by putting just keywords in there uh, in the subject matter field and having a bare bones listing. Okay. Uh, but so what I do in that field is I repeat all my best phrases. I don't care if I use the I don't I don't use the word just once and then fill it with a bunch of words single time. I'll, I'll repeat phrases. So if it's jump rope, I'll put jump rope, jump rope for kids, mm -hmm. um, jump rope for women, and then the next line I'll fill up fifty characters. The next line might be skip rope, uh, skip rope strong, uh, mm -hmm. whatever the, whatever they were. I just fill them up with exact phrase order. Um, with my top keywords and it makes a huge difference in my relevance and my placements. Nice. Oh, that's awesome, Kevin. Thanks so much. So a lot of value bombs here, guys. Um, I would sure be interested in, in trying this. I'd like to define a seller central account now and go ahead and uh, try to unlock this report and see how it looks like. So um, tell us, you know, where can we find you? Uh, well, you can find me at amzmarketer.com, amzmarketer.com. Uh, or, uh, you know, I, like I said earlier, I recommend, uh, I'm not trying to sell a course or anything like that. I mean, I have that for new people. 
Uh, it's, it's like a thousand dollar course, or, but a lot of people like it because every, every Monday I do a live Q and A uh, mm -hmm. for all my students. So it's not a, it's not a coach. It's with me. And so I get on and whatever questions they want to answer, I ask, I answer to the best of my ability, mm -hmm. um, pretty much every Monday. But if you go there to freedomticket.com, there's a webinar. It's in English. So it, you need to speak English, but it's on replay. You can just choose a time and watch the first hour. It's not a hype. It's a, it's solid training. Uh, like we talked about the keyword thing earlier. I recommend you watch that. The second part of the webinar is, is, um, you know, it's, about the course you could if you're not interested in that you don't have to watch that uh, but watch that first hour and whether you're experienced seller or you're new I think you'll you'll learn something from it if you've been selling for a while uh, you can go to Illuminati mastermind uh, dot com that's our training for people who are we recommend you be doing at least twenty five thousand dollars a month in sales mm -hmm. um, but that's that's our training for people who are experienced and kind of know what they're doing but they want to get that next level edge or that the, the crazy little hacks or, or something like that uh, it's closed right now. We don't open it. All, it's not open all the time, but uh, you can enter your email. And uh, when we open it again here soon, um, you can get notified uh, and see if it's something that's of interest to you. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, that's that. That's pretty much where where you can find me. I've heard about Illuminati Mastermind. It's uh, it's super exclusive. So guys, go check it out. Um, crazy hex. And um, by the way, I um, I was watching your presentations last year in uh, in Europe and. Um, Guys, for those of you who haven't seen uh, Kevin on stage, um, you know, just use this chance if you have one, uh, because um, there's always a lot of value. And uh, I think you're sharing a lot of really deep, cool stuff, uh, which is uh, which is not that easy to find. So, guys, make sure you attend some conference or event where Kevin is speaking. It's yeah, I think the next one I'm speaking at is in uh, in Prague uh, in uh, the end of March, uh, the European Seller Summit. Uh, at the, I think it's March 29th and 30th. I'll be, I'll be speaking, speaking there. So that's, uh, that's close to you guys. You don't have to go all, all cool. the way across yeah. the world. Probably. Um, I'm going to be there. I'm going to go by car. So, um, some of the listeners, uh, want to meet me and Kevin, then, uh, you know, let's do it. Let's meet in Prague. Cool. Cool. All right. Thanks so much for being sure. on our show. No and, problem. Uh, all of the best. And I hope to see you again sometime. Yeah. We'll see you again, I guess, uh, in Prague. <laughs> sure at latest all right thanks take care take care everybody good luck on everything bye bye man thanks so much for watching i hope you liked it if so then don't forget to give us a like and um, to subscribe to our channel that would motivate us a lot and um, check out the free trial of sellerboard.com the world's most accurate profit analytics tool for amazon sellers there's a free trial, and after that, it's only $19 a month. Let us know what you think. Thanks so much, and see you guys next time.